Hey folks, welcome back to Game Geeks. I'm your host, Kurt Weagle. Today's episode, we are going to be talking about Torg Eternity. For those of us who've been around a while, and by a while, I mean gaming since at least the early 90s, you'll remember Torg was a pretty big hit role-playing game in the early to mid 90s. The idea behind Torg is that our world, our reality is invaded by other realities in certain geographical points. We're going to talk about those in a couple of minutes. The principal premise behind Torg is that one day, out of nowhere, our reality is invaded by other realities. Now, our reality is strong enough that it limits the invasions to certain geographical points, some of which make a lot of sense, some of which I'm left scratching my head. More on that in just a moment. Their reality that is now imposed upon ours is essentially held down by hard points and crossed over by a maelstrom bridge, which goes back to the parent reality. The danger of this is they have managed to completely transform that region of the land into uh, where they've invaded into something of theirs. What this is, is it's an excuse to give the players, to give a game master and the players, an opportunity to play a wide variety of genres in a single setting that work together fairly harmoniously. So let's talk about these invading realms, shall we? The first one I'm going to talk about is the living land. That essentially is the dinosaurs. This is Land of the Lost. This is the forest primeval. This is the reptile people who are trying to take over. This has taken over most of the East Coast, part of the Northern Midwest, although I'd like to point out that my state of Wisconsin stayed free of it, and the East and the Western seaboard up into Canada. Isle, which is the fantasy realm, has taken over your England and most of Northern Europe. Tharkhold is the techno-demon hell realm that is Russia and Eastern Europe. The Pan, Pan Pacifica, which is sort of your kung fu movie, your just barely above our technology movie, real action-y car chase stuff, is, takes place in Japan and most of China. Nile is the realm of pulp action. This is your two-fisted heroes, your mass avengers, your the mummy sort of thing. And appropriately enough, it takes place in Africa, in no, most of the African coast, northern coast, and down through the Nile River itself. The cyber papacy is my personal favorite because in that realm, what you have is a combination of an oppressive godhead who just happens to be an AI that lives inside of the computer. So you have a combination of cyberpunk and dark ages, inquisition, etc. Now, the one that leaves me scratching my head, I'm not going to lie to you, is Arosh. Arosh is your horror realm. Each one of these realms has a master to it, Arosh's master, the Gaunt Man, the Dark Lord, is sort of the architect behind all of these invasions. They're after all the possibility energy that's inside of and around Earth and people. The reason I find Arosh weird is it's in India. You know, when I think Victorian Gothic horror, I don't instantly go to India. I go to England. But, you know, maybe that's because England was already kind of torn between the cyber papacy and Isle that they put it in India. Like I said, it's an odd position, but it really works as one of the settings. Each one of these realms has its own set of reality rules. And these reality rules are breaking down and broken down into four categories. Magic, social, spirit, and tech. Magic is just what it says. It's sorceress magic. Social is how well developed the society is. Spirit is how well spiritual magic works. And technology is the level of technology that happens to exist in that area. Each of these are dominant for the realm. When characters enter, the, enter into the realm, they don't necessarily instantly revert to a denizen of that realm, especially the player characters because they're storm knights. They're able to hold on to their own ability, their own nature, but some of their technology won't necessarily work. For example, if you walk into the living land with a laser gun from the cyber papacy, odds are high it's not going to work because there's a severe clash between the tech levels of each one. 
Now, there are ways that the Storm Knights, again, the player characters, can enforce their reality on wherever they are at the moment and have things operate normally. But it takes a role or it takes a point of a limited pool that they have. Now, there's an extra layer of crunch in Masterbook, which is what this system was originally called and published as its own generic rule set in the mid-90s that I find slightly vexing because it's just an extra, nah, but it's not that bad, really. To try to do something, you add together your attribute appropriate plus the skill that modifies it, and then you roll a d20. If you roll a 10 or a 20, you roll it again and add together the numbers. Then you check that number off of a chart. And then that chart tells you what to add to your attribute plus skill to see if you reach a success level. So let's say you've got a four in the attribute and a two in the skill, that is six. Your target number is 12 because it's challenging. And then you roll your d20 and you get a 17. You add four to that number. So you have a 10, you didn't get your 12, so you fall slightly short. I may have gotten that a little wrong, but that's the basis of it. So in terms of complexity, I'd put it about Savage Worlds. It's nowhere near Pathfinder or Starfinder, but I put it about Savage Worlds. But once you get that table under your belt, it's not going to be that bad. This is a great return. I'd be amiss if I didn't re refer to the drama deck, which is a deck of cards that you flip over in a given um, in a given exchange, and it has modifications to it. It also has cute little phrases, that sort of thing. It's great. Use, use the drama deck if you have this, because it really adds to the to the play of the game. I love Torg Eternity. It's one of these things that I would love to find a way to if I find time to learn it well enough to teach it to my players because I think they'd have a really good time with it. The two adventures they've released so far are the series of adventures you take on for Delphi, which is sort of what remains of the original reality, trying to save the world, and Day One. And it's an adventure in each one of the realms where it is when the invasion first occurs. So no longer is it six months after the invasion and they had a good foothold. This is your opportunity to really learn what's going on in that particular realm or cosm in and of itself. Please like and share us on Facebook. Go to our webpage because you can see the videos there. Also, there's an Amazon link for each one if you click on that. For Game Geeks, I'm your host, Kurt Weagle. Good day and good gaming.